Hey there and welcome to a Rottler Tech Series on line boring. Today I'm going to show you how to set up uh, a line bore operation. We have a 5.9 Cummins block here, our line bore pivot table, and our right angle drive. Today we're working on the EM79, but the process and the programming will also work on any Rottler machines, the EM69 series, or even the 105 series. Um, so the first thing is what you're going to need to do these operations. Uh, you're going to need our line board pivot table. You're going to need the correct size right angle drive. Our right angle drives are specially designed uh, to fit in between the main caps. If you can't find the size that you're looking for, we do offer specialty ones and we can design uh, two customer specs for whatever engine you're working on. Uh, there's two types. So here, let me pull this down. On our EM79s and our 100 series machines, they're a quill type machine, which means the spindle is moving inside this housing. So it, the right angle drives clamp onto that quill. Uh, so they're kind of a clamp mount versus on an EM69 or an F69, or even our largest machines, the 107 and the 109. So those are gonna be rigid mount where the right angle drive actually bolts into the spindle housing itself. Uh, so, uh, let's bring the camera down here just so you can see the pivot table. So here we have our right angle drive, got our block, and then down here we have our pivot table. We're set up on a few parallels because again, we don't want to have a, a quill type machine down, uh, having the quill exposed any further than we need to. On the pivot table, we have in and out adjustment and up down adjustment. So the process is we want to come over here and we want to line up, sweep our bore, set zeros, move over to the right here, our furthest size, and then we can use these handles to adjust uh, to make sure that the, the two mains are in line. Now there's something that you want to note on these, if you're using this pivot table, the pivot point is right down here on these bolts. So there's one in the front, one in the back. That's your pivot location. So whatever you're going to set up and where you're going to set your zeros, your first journal, you're going to want to make sure that you at least align that that journal that you're going to sweep as much as best as you can in line with that pivot point. Uh, so today on like this block, I, on these five nines, I'm going to sweep actually one in on the left here and then I will sweep the end. Uh, the reason I don't want to set up on this one is because since my pivot point's offset from that, you will have a fulcrum. So you'll come over here in your zero, you go back to the right, and if I came back to this one, I'm going to be off a little bit because that's going to pivot. So I want to be as close to my pivot point as I can. You could also shift this over let the block hang off a little bit. But it's just something to keep in mind. If you're doing V8 blocks, they fit on this pit table a little bit better. We do make cradles, they're V-block cradles. So you can set your cradle as close to the pivot point as you can. Put the bell housing over there again, just keep it close. So on this right angle drive, it mounts up, it actually goes into the, the spindle and it's just like changing a tool. It's a Cat 40 taper, so it'll suck itself up. Then on the front here, we have basically two set screws that can push and pull. So we want to dial in the face. We want to do the face without having any of the cutter head bodies on. We have our spacers which hold our tools. You want to dial in this rad across the face uh, with nothing on it. And then on the back here, we have our screw to tighten our clamp. It's right there on the back. So the process, we can use the Magna Scale. Magna Scale which always comes with all the Rottler machines like to clip that on the block. Make sure it's tight. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna sweep this face. So I've got the scale just touching here. You can eyeball as close to center line as you need. I'll zero out the Magna scale, hit the reset button, and then you'll just sweep across. Okay. Now this process is inside any of the Rottler manuals, so you can look it up and it'll go over that. It should be in the manual for setting up for line bores. Uh, I believe it, you want to try and get that within a half thou on your Magna scale. So to adjust it, you can loosen the collar on the back. It's a 5 sixteenths. And I like to just leave it hand snug. And then you use an eighth inch Allen key on these two screws in here. And you can adjust whichever way you need to go. Split the difference and then tighten up your collar. I like to put a little tension on this and sweep.
and then adjust some more. You want to be patient with this. It takes a few tries to get used to it. And as you tighten this, it's not uncommon to see this. It's actually moving uh, kind of up and down as you tighten this back. So just do it in increments, keep checking, and be patient. And as long as you keep checking as you're tightening, it should stay even side to side. I got about two tenths on my magna scale, so we're gonna call that as good as we're gonna get it. So then we'll take this off. So once we've got that dialed in, the next thing we're gonna need is this little adapter, which lets the magna scale go centered into the right angle drive. <clears throat> this will come with your right angle drive or any line boring kits. And what that does is it just goes right here. Again, no tool in it. Put this in the face. I like to use an Allen key. Just to make sure it's snug in there. It's okay if it spins around. And then, we can once again, grab our magnet scale. And this has a little screw on it. You can put the probe tip. This is angled, so it'll face away from the rad, which lets you sneak into the bores. We'll click this in there for starting. I'll just tighten that. Okay, so now, now that we got that in, we want to come down here back to that pivot point. We'll dial, I'll sweep this one in. We set zeros for Y and Z, and then we can move back to our, uh, our main on the other side sweep it, however far it's out, we adjust the pivot table. So now, this is where we want to keep in mind and what we've done. If you've taken the caps and you've ground or milled them down, you're going to want to know that amount. If you're taking 10 thou off, just make sure you have that number. What we want to do is I like to do the Y direction first which is this way along the machine. And we're gonna go uh, basically just underneath the split line on the block side. Center on the block in Y, we can save that zero, then we'll check Z when we're in the center. And depending on how much you take off, if you're taking 10, uh, theoretically you'd be zero on the block and you'd show a positive 10 on the scale in the cap. It's not uncommon to wanna clean up a little bit in the block maybe you would go one thousandth of an inch into the block and then you'd be nine into the cap for this demonstration what i'm doing here this is just a standard block and we haven't taken anything off it so we're just sweeping zero and zero but that process is the same so you just need to know how much you've taken off that cap so i'll bring my scale in and then i'll use the hand wheel with the spindle, fire and adjust. And we can just eyeball. We'll set the magnet scale. Sweep over to the other side. Set the zero, now that I've checked, looks like this is about 10 thousandths out. So then what I'm gonna use is I wanna use my Y axis jog Split the difference and sweep again with my spindle. I like to check it a couple times. Once I'm in within about a thousandth of an inch, I'll switch to the tenths increment. On the tenths with the hand wheel, there will be some backlash because it's such a fine movement. So, whatever you want to move, move the opposite direction first, maybe like a thousandth or two thousandths of an inch, and then move back to where it needs to be. So, I've got about one thou out here. Sweep it to the back, just double check that number. It's still showing about a thousandth. I'll switch to my tenths increments. Now I'm going to go past and then I'll come back. Split the difference at a half now and once again, switch the block. Okay, and about two tenths, four tenths there. We'll call that good. So if I'm happy with the Y, I can double tap and zero out that Y axis number. 
Then I want to do the same thing with the Z. So I'll go down so my spindle is vertical. So I couple the set spindle zero with it straight up and down. And we'll see here what we've got. At 180 out. I need to move up. And we'll set zero. So I've done mine even. So we're completely even in Z, top and bottom. Again, if I had taken 10 off these caps, I would be looking at probably 9 thou uh, positive on, that, on the dial uh, in the cap and maybe a thousandth of an inch in the block. So once you have X. Y and Z set and stored as zero, we just want to come up and we're going to move out to our other board. So now what we want to do is we've saved Y and Z zero. So we want to just, now that we're clear and free, we're gonna just, I like to do a move to command. So I'll move to zero on Y and move to zero on Z. So this should be the same Y and Z position as we were over there. And then we'll sweep. And same thing, I like to usually do Y first. We'll go, so we're at split line on the block side. Set a zero and sweep. I like to do it a couple times. Make sure I'm getting consistent numbers. Okay, I've got about four that. So, this is where we want to adjust our handles uh, down here. So our left does our out and in. That's our Y axis. Again, take the backlash out of these. So I'll go past, and I'm going to come back. And I'm watching my scale up here. I was at four. Put the difference at two and sweep. Okay, zero and negative six tenths. Zero. Let me go. That's just a hair. Good, so I got it within two tenths there. Then we'll do the same thing. We'll go find the low point here. We get our spindle zero again. I'm just going to zero out, and let's see back up, 180 degrees, and this one's good, we're actually at zero here, which again, we would make it match, uh, depending on how much we take it on the cap. So after you've done that, it's always a good idea to go back and check your, your first hole. It's not uncommon to have to go back and, and do a fine adjustment. Just because, as we talked about earlier, that fulcrum point, depending on which one you're set up and how far off it is, uh, you might have a little bit that's tweaked. So I'm gonna move back once I'm in there to Z0. Position this back in to assist my probe. I have positive pressure. This is reading zero again. That's good, so we'll just check. Z, four tenths again on Z, so that means we know we didn't move anything there. Usually it's Y. Same thing. Let's just double check. And I did move just a little bit. So we wanna move, again, on this side, we're moving the axes. So we'll just adjust. I need to move by about a thousandth of an inch. So I'll grab my Y feed and we'll just move in. Okay. And let's see. Zero and four tenths on the other side. Then a half thousandths, I'll accept that. And if you want, you can go back after you've done that adjustment. Make sure you set your Y0, however you changed it. And you can come back and check this one again. Usually it's gonna be good. 
So you have to do a tweak to this one. Add another thousands. Watch my scale. Just there. Spin. We've set up our right angle drive, we've swept the block, we've adjusted the line board pivot table, and the next step will be to go and write the program. So this completes part one of this series. In the next video segment, we'll go over and then get in on the screen here and the software and show how to save all the locations, set feeds and speeds, and overall write out the program. Hope this is helpful for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully you get to line boring soon.